Hello and welcome back to another For Sale by Owner training student interview. With me, I got another one of our great students, uh, Mr. Drake Abshire. Drake, thank you so much for being on with me today. Yeah, excited to be here. Cool, man. So, uh, yeah, I just want to tell the viewers, kind of walk them through your journey of uh, when you got started or before we started working together and then you know, what things are like now that we've been working together for, I don't know, I th how long have you been in the program actually? Um, I actually should have figured out that exact date, but I want to say it's probably a little past six weeks going on like two months. Somewhere okay. around there. Yeah. So, so fairly new actually. So, yeah. um, awesome. So you, we've been working together. Yeah. For about two months. What were things like, what, what market are you in and how long have you actually been selling real estate? Um, so I'm in the Louisiana market. I'm in Lafayette area. So it's kind of central when you're at the bottom, when you're looking at Louisiana and, um, I've been in real estate. It, I'm going on to, it'll be my second year. So uh, cool. about a year and a half when I decided to start the program. Awesome. Awesome. So, uh, before we started working together, tell me about the business. How, what were your challenges? What, what would that look like before we started working together? Um, I think for me, I thought it would be easier to do real estate. Honestly, I think everybody kind of expects that in the beginning. Um, I thought it was just, you know, knowing people and talking with them and telling them you're in real estate and that would be it. And for the most part, I guess that's how I got my few first transactions was just through friends and, you know, referrals. Um, but I wanted to be more aggressive than that because I was like, I only have so many friends and I don't want to irritate them every single day because that's what I was taught at my first, you know, brokerage that, Oh, just call your friends and family every single week and every day. And they're going to send you business. And just in my mind, I was like, that sounds irritating. Like who would want to get a call from me every single day asking for work. So, um, I was kind of at a loss of how, you know, to really go about my business my first year, I had one like rental and I sold maybe like two or three transactions. One was commercial land, two were homes. So I had a little bit of experience, but not as much as I knew I could have had. But I think I did better than some real estate agents. <laughs> but um, obviously, I wanted to reach for a little bit more. And so that's why when Corona hit, I was working another job um, that was supporting me um, because obviously real estate wasn't. Um, my transactions were too far and few between. So uh, I came across your program and at that point I was like, okay, let me take this a little bit more seriously. I had time to think during Corona and, you know, sitting at home a lot. And I was like, well, where do I really want to be? What do I want in life? And, um, you know, I've made a lot of careers, different switches, trying to figure out, I've always worked a lot of different jobs, but I was like, well, maybe I should try actually focusing on one career and see how that works. And that right there, using your program and like really just taking the time to actually say, okay, this is what I am. This is what I'm going to live, breathe and do. And that opened like my business. I just felt like almost immediately I felt like just my business exploded. It really did. It was crazy how there was like this constant influx. Oh, hi. That is. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so there's just this uh, constant influx of uh, business just coming in and people calling me and like, um, I don't know. It was just, it's really exciting. It was a momentum and now I'm just rolling with it. I love it. I love it. So, so let's unpack that for, for, for the people watching this, you know, in the future. And that is, so, so before, like a lot of people, you got into the business, like so many other people thinking it was one thing, quickly finding out it was another. Uh, when you got into the business, you probably thought it was like a pretty sexy business you know, easy path to make a lot of money. Like, tell me about the mindset when you first said, all right, I'm going to become, get my license and get into real estate. Yeah. I mean, I knew there was a lot of moving parts to it. I don't want to sit there and act like I thought, oh, it was going to be easy, but I didn't think it would be as hard as it was. And I think the hard part comes from not knowing what you're doing, because when you actually know what you're doing and you have intentions behind everything that you do, then it becomes easier. My, the hard part is you're not only learning how to be a real estate agent, but you also have to try to make a living while you're learning. So that kind of slows down the process of everything. And, you know, and I guess the learning is in the doing, like you always say, right? So it's like, uh, I, I wasn't able to do it enough to really learn the way that I wanted to. Do I feel like now I'm learning? Yes, because I'm constantly doing real estate every single day. I'm talking to clients every single day. 
So I feel like I probably know a lot more than some real estate agents who've been doing it for years because they're not doing the amount of work that I'm doing. That's right. That's right. So, so off air, before we started recording, you kind of shared with me your numbers over the past two months that we've been working together. And so, so walk people through what, what is, what has transpired now that you've gone all in on your real estate business, you've said no to all the distractions. Um, you got what, six or seven for sale by owner transactions in the last two months. Is that right? So it's six listings and I have one buyer. Um, he actually I had somebody else, another realtor who sold his house as a buyer's agent, but I called him, kept in touch with him and he chose to buy his property with me, which was actually a pretty nice pro you know, property and we're under contract with that. So that was great. And then um, I have two more listings that are coming up. Another one, which is a for sale by owner. The other one was actually because I was doing open houses and on social media talking about my listings and he kept watching. And so he reached out to me and it's actually a luxury listing. So it's my, you know, my first high dollar listing like this. So I was really excited about that. And I attribute that still to this program because if I wouldn't have been advertising all these listings, he would have never reached out to me at viewing me as the professional that I am. Right. So I think it's, it's all momentum and I do attribute it all to, you know, what I've been doing with the program. Yeah. So, so you, in the last two months, Drake, here's the truth. You have done more in two months than most agents do in a year, some in two, some in three years you've been able to do in the last 60 days. So how is that possible? Like, what have you been learning? What about the approach that we, when we work on things, help people really understand why you're able to do what you're doing now? Yeah. Um, I think the hard pill to swallow was that it's just like, I work a lot. <laughs> um, I, I really, it's, I'm finding that work-life balance because it's also kind of addicting, right? When you yeah. get business and you get momentum, it's like, oh my God, where's the next one? Where's the next one? It's never enough which is also a little scary because like I can literally just sign a listing contract leaving and I'm like, well, I need to call somebody to get that next one. Right. <laughs> so yeah, it, which is a good thing, I guess. That's a good mindset that I have now that I've kind of built with this program um, too. But I would say um, uh, it, it's, it's making phone calls every single day. It really is. Even if it's not completely prospecting phone calls, it's following up with the people or just, talking to somebody about some type of real estate, whether it's following up with a few buyers maybe you have in your pipeline, or just um, if you didn't make the calls you were supposed to make the day before, I'm making sure I'm trying to double up the time that I make on the next day. Um, so again, there's a formula to everything. It's not always pretty, <laughs> but I make sure I'm doing something that's productive that's at, at, um, at, you know, throughout the day. So if it wasn't done in the morning, I make sure I, I stay at the office or I buckle down and do it in the afternoon. So I'm just always trying to make sure that the things that I know are getting me the appointments or what are getting me these listings that I'm doing those things constantly. So that's great. And so I think you nailed it. I think that what I'm hearing you say is the same story for most agents. And that is you went from a world that was not structured. There was no discipline. There was no... In there's no being intentional to what you were doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Whereas now it seems like you have a cut, clear cut focus uh, direction path and you are treating this like a business. Every single day, you're going to spend time generating new leads and you're going to spend time every day converting the leads that you've generated. And it's really that simple. Why do you think so many real estate agents, and we're talking about, you know, potentially a million plus people in this industry that have such a hard time with that simple concept of, I need to generate new leads in the morning and follow up. Why do people have such a hard time with that? I don't know. Cause I mean, even I, I think fight with that too sometimes, right? The, uh, it, I love hunting. So the, the, the finding the leads is easier for me. Yeah. Follow up is where it's kind of like, like, ugh, I don't want to have to make all these calls to these people who I'm going to have these awkward conversations with. So, but I think that what that falls back to is just forcing yourself to do it and reminding yourself of what you get from doing this. Yeah. So like when I sit there and I focus on the fact, well, you have, you know, six listings and almost all of them are under contract, like thinking that in my mind where I'm just like, well, if all these close, I'm not going to have any more listings. So I'm telling myself, okay, I need to find more listings. So I need to talk to these people. 
So when you do that, it kind of forces you into those uncomfortable zones, I guess, is what I would say with that. And um, it, it's just about building these habits. And it, I think you've said it before, it's like a muscle, right? So it's like you have to work that muscle and get used to these uncomfortable time periods of when you're like, I don't want to make these calls, but if you make yourself do them anyway and you get the results you want, I think you start to just learn to love the pain and just kind of do it. It's just part of, you know, what you do. This is who you are. Yeah. And the thing I would add in there just from a, from a simple coaching perspective right now is that, um, you know, I think a lot of agents feel the same way about follow-up. I think what you're going to find is you keep building and scaling your business that what you define as a lead will change over time where right now you're probably following up with people having weird conversations because they weren't really an actual lead. So what you'll find is that as you get busier to get people into your world where you're going to put them in your CRM, you're going to follow up with them, there'll be higher quality conversations because you will would have learned. You say, nope, that person, I'm not going to force that one. You're going to learn how to have better conversations. So, so certainly you're doing the actions. I mean, that's, I always tell our students, right? It's, it's actions times skill equals your results. So you're doing the actions, but I'll tell you, I mean, to get six or seven deals within two months, certainly we've got to talk about skills, you know? So you're doing all the good stuff, which is great. What about like the skill set or the approach or the way in which we go about getting listings do you think is different than what the rest of the industry is doing? Um, I do practice all the time with other agents too. Um, now that I've gotten busier, it's getting tough, I think, to keep that on schedule all the time. Um, but I would say right when I started, I got two role play partners and I would alternate. So I had one that was for Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. The other one was for Tuesdays and Thursdays. On the weekend, I would still make my calls, but I wouldn't role play on the weekend. I would just do what I needed to do for work-wise and make my calls. Uh, but I would definitely attribute the fact of practicing. Um, you can't, you, you shouldn't be practicing with your clients because okay. that's when you're on stage, right? You got to perform. And I think that's what I was doing all the time was I would learn these scripts or do things. And my practice was happening right with the client. And that's how you lose deals. Right? So the idea is if I think you have to practice in every, and I think it just makes sense. Most real estate agents, I think nowadays, or the way I used to think too, was that, you know, you just do it and you'll learn it as you do it, which is true, but you also need to practice your skills. In any job, I think everybody has some kind of training or practice that they do. And I think that's, that's really what it is, is really honing in, you know, finding what you're good at, finding what you need to work on and refining it. Yeah. And so I think the thing that at least I try to focus on when, when we look at our approach and the skills that we try to teach our students are you learning like some high pressure, super powerful closer, you know, magic fairy dust? Or do you have a different approach than that? No, I'm actually, uh, I'm more of what you consider laid back type person. I'm really not a pressury, like I don't like coming across salesy. When I'm talking to people too, I think that's one of the things they love about me. I literally had a conversation with a girl the other day and I, she, she had this attitude over the phone where she was like, you know, agents beat them up and I could just tell right away. And I was like, look, I'm going to level with you. I was like, I'm not here to pressure you to try to list or anything like that. I was like, I get it. You're probably getting a lot of phone calls. And almost immediately she goes, Drake, you sound like such a nice agent, you know, and she let me come see her house because she could tell that I was just, I was, I was just being friendly and being like, look, I want, I want to help you if I can, you know, that's the, the mindset that I come from. And, and that almost immediately disarms them in that way. Um, I've even been able to kind of diffuse some people who hang up on me because I feel bad when that happens because I'm like, I, why, I didn't do anything to make them upset other than the fact of what other people are doing. So That's I right. like to text people after the hand and I'm saying, I'm sorry we got disconnected. Uh, I like to apologize for any other agents that have put a bad taste in your mouth and, you know, tried to say that you can't sell on your own, things like that. And almost every time they, res they respond back and thank me so much for being so kind and not, you know, and not pressuring them. And they're sorry for treating me like that because they're like, of what happened with the other agents. So if you just come from a genuine place and like, you know, realize it's a human on the other side, they may be having a bad day or beat up by other agents. I think it really makes a difference in your approach. And um, it can be really disarming and open the opportunity for a relationship. Man, that was, that was like beautiful. Like you, how you just said that is like, 
I feel like you said that better than I do. Like when I try to teach agents, like, hey, dude, we're, we're not going to pressure people. We're going to actually care and we're going to communicate that we care. And I love what you said because I do the same thing. When someone hangs up on me, they're hanging up because of all the agents that came across as high pressure, pushy salespeople. And I always do the same thing. I'm so sorry if I've offended you. I really just wanted to help. And almost every time I get a response or someone's nasty to me on the phone, I level shift. Say, hey, you know, I did not mean to offend you. I bet you you're getting a lot of people trying to do X, Y, and Z. And so when we have, help an agent in our program shift that mindset, I mean, great things happen. So my last question for you is, what advice can you give to an agent that is sitting there watching this saying, you know, I'm just so frustrated with my business. I want to start prospecting. It scares the crap out of me because it's so uncomfortable. What advice would you give to an agent to, to get started? Um, everybody feels exactly what you're feeling at one point and still feels that, um, you know, on different days. You have to, I don't know any other way to say you just have to push yourself through it. You just have to roll with the punches. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. But as long as you start to break down what your processes are and, and do them, watch and, and see what actually works. So when you have a moment with a certain client where you hit home with them, just remember that moment. Remember, try to remember what you said or remember your process, the steps that you took with that client. Because all you got to do is start to mirror that. You just got to repeat that same process with other clients. And you're going to begin to have a style to the way that you perform and more predictable results. And that's what's, that's what's happening with me. Because I can almost tell now when I'm having conversations with people, some of them I'm like, this one's not going to most likely happen. And I might be defeating myself by that, but I can just tell they're not gelling with me and they're not, they're not feeling the same with the ones that I know do. So, you know, I, I think it's, again, just understanding the steps and practicing. You got to practice your skills and then you just got to do the work. That's right. It's great. It's great advice. You know, great advice. And the thing that I would just add on to that really quickly is that, you know, remember that you don't have to be, and this is, I'm not talking to you, I'm talking to people watching this. You don't have to be this super like aggressive salesperson. That's the reason why you don't want to pick up that phone is you feel like you have to be someone you're not. And what Drake and I are saying is you don't. You need to go out there and try to help people and communicate that you're there to help. And I think that will ease people's pain of wanting to pick that phone up that sometimes seems 10,000 pounds. It's like, dude, <laughs> detach from the outcome. Go out there and communicate that I'm here to help you. I could do a great job for you, um, you know, and don't have to pressure people. And I think great things will happen. So what, in the future for you, Drake, what, what does it look like for you? Where do you want to take this business? What are some of your future goals? Um, well, I mean... My goal is definitely to scale. I would love to have a team that I work with. Um, I love being a listing agent. I do work with a few buyers, but my goal is I would love to be able to funnel a lot of my buyers to, to somebody else on my team. That way I can really focus on you know, being, li being a listing agent because that's the point I really, really do enjoy um, a lot. Um, and uh, yeah, scaling my business, I think, is a, is, a, is a big deal for me. I would really love to have you know, uh, other people that could work along with me and, you know, we can, we could grow together and kind of create our, a, a brand that kind of breathes um, a fresh air into real estate. Because I do notice that almost all the time with my presentations that people almost immediately are just like, I've never, I've never heard. Actually, can I tell you a quick experience? Yeah, yeah please. Okay. So this is really cool. I actually had a couple that I recently, I'd went for their first interview and the grandmother was sitting on the couch the whole time. And she was listening, but I didn't think she was because she's playing on her phone and she wasn't involved in the conversation at all. And when I asked the couple about if they knew what their bottom line is and their finances and everything, when it comes to, you know, when they are going to have to negotiate, they turned to the grandma and the grandma goes, I've been in mortgage for 30 years. And wow. she's like, I actually have to say, I have never heard a presentation like yours before. And she's like, <laughs> she's like, and I'm completely blown away. I want some business cards. Cause she's like, you don't know how many agents I actually have to walk them through the processes mm -hmm. and understand some of the things that you're teaching them and giving them for free here on the first day. And that right there, I was just like, I was just like, wow, I'm onto something. I knew, you know, what I'm doing, I'm doing the right things. And those people ended up being a come list me after just three days. Oh, because okay. they were just, and I already got them under contract. So it's just, you know, it's, it's about doing the work, coming from a good place, being helpful. You have to be willing to give everything you can for free 
because that always, I feel like it comes back to you. It really does. You have to give anything you can, you know, to be helpful and it's always going to come back to you. I agree. Can you give us one example? Because I, every time I do these interviews, I get feedback uh, from people like, you know, like, like you just said, like this great presentation. And then people will say, well, what does he mean by that? Can you give us one example of one part of that presentation? Like, what was one thing that you went through with them that really impressed them uh, as it relates to your presentation? Um, I would say for sure, I, I, went, I went through the CMA and they actually weren't priced badly, but I kind of showed them how days on market can be a killer for getting top dollar. Love so they really, yeah, they really appreciated that. But I think what they loved also was that I really went through their listing that they had and kind of, you know, explained some things. I was like, I kept saying also too, I want to show you this if it's not going to offend you. And, you know, can I be honest with you? You know, I, I was like, I keep reminding them that right now, it's not about emotion, even though this is a home that you guys have lived in for a long time. I was like, we need to remove that emotional aspect of it and put a business hat on and really look at it from a buyer's perspective and say, what are they thinking when they walk through this property? You know, what are the things that are going to tell them that, you know, your value goes here when we want your value to stay up here? And so that's what I keep telling them. Let's look at this listing and say, what doesn't read, you know, this is my value. I want to stay up here. This is worth it to me. And so, you know, telling them and pointing out these different little mistakes that they were making, I think was really hitting home for them. And so, you know, they were really, they were really like, wow, yeah, I never thought about that or I never saw that. And I totally see what you mean. And, you know, so I got a lot of that from them. And I think that was really helpful. You know what it is, Drake, that you just reminded me of. And I try to say this all the time to the agents in our program that, People have such a hard time with this. And that is, it wasn't about, you know, what you said or something you showed them on some piece of paper that all these agents think it is. It was more about how you made them feel. You know, it was less about the script and more about the approach. You know, because I get agents all the time like, all right, well, what is he talking about? What does he show them? You know, is he showing them some fancy like thing? Like, ooh, look, at no, 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 no. We're not talking about that. We're not yeah. talking. Drake doesn't have some magic wand he pulls out of his, his hat and says, all right, here's what we're going to do. No, we're just, it's the way we make people feel. So, dude, thank you so much for doing this. Again, I think that the results that you have speak for themselves. I think that you can absolutely scale this to have a nice group around you to build a really nice business that's super profitable where people on your team uh, have a great career. And I fully anticipate that happening. So, man, thank you so much for jumping on with me today. Yeah, no, and thank you for all your training and continued support. It's, it's been an awesome journey, and I'm, I'm loving it. I love it, Drake. All right, man, have a great week, and uh, we'll see you soon, all right? All right, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks.